Now, our next special guest is Dr. Thomas Levy, who is a co-author of The Toxic Tooth, How a Root Canal Could Be Making You Sick. Dr. Levy is a board-certified cardiologist. This is his 10th health-related book, and we welcome Dr. Levy to KLBJ. Doctor, thanks for being with us today. My pleasure. Happy to be here, sir. Well, Dr. Levy, I know a lot of people are listening to the show that are having just had root canals or have root canals, and they're probably said, oh, my goodness, what are we going to hear now? Uh, but maybe you can educate our, our, our listeners uh, exactly why root canals maybe not be the, the best option for somebody if they have a bad tooth. Well, as a cardiologist, I've long wondered why coronary arteries become inflamed, which cardiology agrees happens and causes plaque and heart attacks. And I finally came across recent literature, and by recent I mean 2013 and 2014, that shows that well over 90%, really over 95% of the blood clots that cause heart attacks And inside the plaques themselves is the same DNA that's present in all the typical pathogens that are inside the mouth, in gum disease and the typical pathogen profile inside root canals. Uh, A lot of us have known for a long time that the root canal is always infected. They cut out the nerves so you don't feel pain anymore, but it stays infected. And as such, it's a nonstop repository for these pathogens that can very easily be disseminated in the blood supply every time you chew on them. Well, you know, it's, it's, it seems, is there a, you know, a lot of people that uh, have we've, we've spoken to in a pharmacy say, you know, we, they had root canals 20 years ago and it's much, much different than it is today. Is there, are you still feeling that today the, with modern equipment that root canals still uh, are unable to really c- control that infection? No, yeah, it's got nothing to do with how the procedure is done, how well it's done technically. It's what we call a fatally flawed procedure. Basically, in a nutshell, they use devices, the dentist, to core out the nerve and the blood supply and basically leave a pulpless tooth inside uh, inside the mouth. Now, once you remove the pulp, you remove any mechanism by which your immune system can continue to go in and keep the tooth sterile. So they all are infected or become infected, and it's got nothing to do with how well the procedure was done. So, no, I would say that's a bit of unfortunate false reassurance because that's simply not the case. You know, if you've had a root canal and it's 20 years old in your tooth, what you're probably saying is probably a good good advice to have your dentist take a look at it to see if it's if it's leaking or it's infected and i understand there's some some neat uh, ways of how you can find out whether your tooth is infected now even without x-rays well again we use the term infected uh, uh what they're looking for is gross abscesses uh, once the pulp is removed the bacteria take up residence Some people are fortunate to do well for a long time on their root canals. However, it begs the question when somebody who's 55 or 60 years old gets a heart attack and they had a root canal done 20 years earlier, they never make the correlation between the two because it's just too far removed. But why do some people get a heart attack at 60 and some people do well until their 90s? You know, some people, yes, they can have a root canal and it can stay in their mouth and they can live a long, healthy life. But I guarantee you most people get their immune systems hammered as these toxins and bacteria continue to wear down the immune system uh, over the years. And I might add, many people do not do well for decades with root canals, although a handful do. Our phone number is 512-836-0590. If you have a question for us today, our guest in this segment is Dr. Thomas Levy, co-author of The Toxic Tooth. A couple other things we've talked about on the show today, doctor, that we'd like to to run past you. But one of those topics has to do with the juicing trend. I want to ask you about this because some of the so-called experts in the business as this trend seems to be taking off as a way of cleansing and and detox and so forth. Some of the concerns are that the juice is to blame for weight gain, for diabetes, and even dental problems. Would you share those concerns uh, about juicing? Well, you know, I think on the whole, juicing is excellent and beats what comes in second place with different faddish diets. 
but it's primarily going to be dictated by what you juice, the quality of what you juice, and the th- different things you juice together. I mean, if you're juicing uh, a wide variety of raw vegetables together, that's not going to be a source of weight gain. Now, if all you're doing is uh, making the equivalent of fruit smoothies and juicing those, well, you'll get a lot of excess sugar, and weight gain can be a problem. But but for the most part, it's really, uh, uh, I think, an overall uh, healthy trend. You know, also, Doctor, there was an article in the Wall Street Journal that talked about mouthwashes and rinsing well. A lot of people think that, you know, if they just rinse with a mouthwash, they're going to get rid of that any of the bacteria that may be there. Could you give us your opinion on that? Well, this goes also to what Dr. Kulats and I talked about in the book. One of the most important things for maintaining uh, healthy teeth and not even having these indications for root canals or tooth extraction is to maintain healthy gums and the best way to maintain healthy gums is with a regular warm water pick with a little bit of hydrogen peroxide in it this keeps the gums nice and healthy it keeps the uh, barrier to infection going down into the periodontal ligament area Uh, and in direct answer to your question no swishing, swishing your mouth out with mouthwash that might be a little bit better than not doing it at all, but it's going to do very little to get the type of food that gets impacted between the teeth. Even flossing leaves a lot of stuff behind, okay? Someone who just flosses and does the uh, mouthwash would still be best advised to go ahead and proceed with a water pick with a little bit of peroxide uh, and, uh, and some water, warm water, and maybe your favorite mouthwash. And again, this is all outlined in the book. As we begin to wrap up with Dr. Thomas Levy, maybe, Doctor, it would be helpful because I mentioned in the intro that you are a board-certified cardiologist. Some of our listeners might be saying, well, hey, wait a minute, what's a heart doctor do and tell me about my mouth? Maybe you can explain the connection there. Well, as we started out at the top here, uh, what I'm talking about right now is the direct reason for the vast majority of heart attacks. So that makes it about as close to my subspecialty of medicine as you can get. Uh, A lot of cardiologists do a lot of good, but they just practice after-the-fact cardiology. They wait till you have chest pain. They wait till you have a heart attack. This I'm talking about is how to keep from getting there in the first place. Well, especially in today's uh, environment where where we want our listeners to invest in their health and look at prevention and and things that can uh, uh, prevent uh, major uh, catastrophic disease. So it sounds like they need to pay attention to their teeth and some simple tips is the first step. And as you point out, uh, Dr., 25 million root canal procedures are performed in the United States every year. So your premise, along with your co-author, is odds are good. If you haven't had one, chances are at some point in your life you will be uh, given the choice of of doing just that, right? And that's exactly the word that we're talking about, Dr. Kulats and I, is choice. We're not saying ban root canals. We're not saying uh, never get a root canal or as the dentist never do a root canal. But we are saying let the people make a choice. In 2009, they came out with a study in the Journal of the American Dental Association that simply showed if you have one or more root canal-treated teeth in your mouth, you have a greater chance of coronary artery disease or heart attack, plain and simple. And that should be part of the informed consent. There's lots of stuff we do in medicine that has side effects. Well, this is a procedure that clearly can have side effects as well. And it shouldn't just be the dentist saying, well, you need a root canal, and that's the entire informed consent. Doctor, with just a a minute or so left, we want to give you a chance. Anything else in the book, any key takeaways that you would like for our listeners to to hear about today and to encourage them to to go to their favorite bookstore and and to check out your book? Well, only that this has been a topic of uh, controversy for over 100 years called the focal infection theory. And things have been going back and forth, back and forth. Well, the point of this book, because Dr. Kulats and I wrote another one in 2002, is now we have the scientific literature. Now we have clear evidence, even in the dental literature, that what so many dentists say about root canal treated teeth simply is not true. They may believe it's true. I, I can't look at the heart and soul of these dentists, but 
They are simply wrong and misguided about this procedure, and it's causing a huge amount of morbidity and mortality in this country. Uh, we wrote it at the level so that anybody can get something out of it, and it's certainly something that anybody should pick up before they decide to proceed with the root canal. And we also give instructions to dentists who are interested in learning on how to properly extract and clean out the socket because it's not as straightforward as you might think. So we have a little bit of everything in there for both the dentist and the concerned public. And as uh, as usual, there's a website as well. It's ToxicTooth.com, ToxicTooth.com. And with that, Dr. Thomas Levy, we really appreciate your time, and thanks for being with us on KLBJ today. Thank you very much. Thank Glad you. Glad to be here.